Well, uh, on behalf of the organizing committee, it's my happy duty to extend to uh, all of you uh, a warm welcome to the beautiful and memorable city of Siena. Uh, now I give immediately the word to the Dean of the Humanities in Siena, Professor, Professor uh, Gabriella Piccini. Grazie, mi alzo per salutarvi. Io desidero innanzitutto porgere a tutti i presenti Grazie. Il caloroso benvenuto qui all'Università di Siena a nome mio, del magnifico rettore dell'Università e appunto mio a nome di tutto il Dipartimento di Scienze Storiche e dei Beni Culturali della nostra Università. Il nostro saluto è rivolto prima di tutto ai relatori, ai illustri, ma anche a tutti coloro che sono qui, in mezzo a noi, per ascoltare e partecipare al dibattito scientifico. È un saluto caloroso e rivolto alle istituzioni che sono presenti anche a questo tavolo, qui a Cerna, il professore Bello, il Consiglio Nazionale per la Ricerca, che è il nostro padre nell'organizzazione, al Ministero per i Beni e le Attività Culturali. Saluto e ringrazio infine tutti coloro che si sono spesi nell'organizzazione delle giornate, quindi la segreteria scientifica, l'ufficio congressi, i nostri studenti che sono là fuori, che sono presenti come volontari, gli enti che hanno dato il patrocinio gentilmente all'iniziativa e gli sponsor che generosamente hanno sostenuto questo impegno. E non può certo mancare per quel che riguarda il nostro dipartimento un ringraziamento personale al nostro collega Stefano Campana che è stato per noi l'anima di tutto questo. In questo nostro, cioè vostro, in particolare incontro io sono stata entusiasta fin da quando è stata avanzata la proposta perché sono convinta che manifestazioni di questo genere rappresentino uno dei segni più tangibili e concreti di come l'università pubblica, e ci tengo a sottolineare, l'università pubblica italiana lavori di come si formi e si costruisca il sapere. Sono manifestazioni per le quali provo come studiosa, come docente e come direttrice del Dipartimento un grande compiacere. Ritengo inoltre che sia un grande onore per noi ospitare un convegno che, giunto alla sua quarantesima edizione, ha anche in considerazione, consentite di spendere un minuto su questo, della storia del nostro Ateneo, in particolare della tradizione di studi archeologici che è stata da sempre molto attiva e propositiva nel settore delle tecnologie applicate. Non posso non ricordare che nell'Università di Siena, eh, fin dalla, dagli inizi degli anni 90, si è svolto un ruolo centrale sia in ambito nazionale sia internazionale nello sviluppo delle applicazioni informatiche all'archeologia. Il mio pensiero in questo momento e la mia gratitudine profonda va inevitabilmente a Riccardo Frankovic, eh, che è stato per molti di noi quasi un fratello e che grazie, che appunto grazie alle sue qualità di innovatore, a questa grande e eccezionale energia che metteva nel suo lavoro, è riuscito a dare un impulso straordinario anche in questo settore di studi un corso che continua, che continua la sua azione nei suoi allievi e nelle tante persone che ha saputo ispirare. E ricordo eh, a, chi, a chi non se lo ricordasse anche da solo, ma per noi è questo pensiero è molto presente, che proprio oggi ricorre l'ottavo anniversario della sua scomparsa. E noi in caso passiamo qui in questa giornata per sentirlo anche un po' vicino a noi. I numeri di questo convegno sono francamente sorprendenti, siete più di 500 iscritti che hanno spinto gli organizzatori a chiudere l'iscrizione ad un certo punto perché avranno abbondantemente superato ogni previsione, ma anche per aver raggiunto di fatto il livello di saturazione degli spazi e delle strutture della nostra università. Qui sono rappresentati tra voi 50 paesi e tutte le più prestigiose università e istituzioni della ricerca europea ed extraeuropea. Quindi lo spazio in questi quattro giorni, il programma dei lavori è intensissimo, avrete 46 sessioni tematiche, 12 workshop, 7 tavole rotonde, 4 lezioni magistrali, con discussioni, attività sociali, con cui proseguiranno in altra forma i dibattiti e le discussioni, questi preziosi scambi di idee che io amo chiamare 
da bocca a orecchio eh, che sono una forma del nostro lavoro che resta insuperabile e che prima da è sempre insuperabile. Termino questo saluto con una considerazione eh, semplice senza entrare nel merito di discussioni e analisi che richiederebbero approfondimenti complessi e forse è un luogo considerata la sede il mio compito qui penso che vedere tanto dinamismo e tanti giovani studiosi, docenti e ricercatori confluire da tutto il mondo per discutere delle sempre nuove opportunità offerte dall'applicazione delle tecnologie ci debba far riflettere molto sul ruolo, sulle modalità e sullo spazio da dare in ambito formativo anche a questi temi e a questi problemi. Mi sembra oggi più che mai che di fronte a, a tutti voi, eh, a questo pubblico vivace e eh, forte, sia la domanda di confronto e di formazione intorno a, a, ai temi che vi siete proposti. Rispetto ad essi noi dobbiamo eh, forse ritenere superata la fase eroica degli anni 90, che è l'inizio del nuovo secolo, ma eh, in totale accordo con il motto della vostra conferenza il futuro è ancora eh, tutto da costruire, con l'impegno di mantenere sempre viva la, car eh, la forte carica innovativa che ha caratterizzato la prima fase. E quindi benvenuti assieme e benvenuti nella nostra conferenza. I thank you very much the Dean, Professor Piccini, and I give the word to the uh, Chairman of CIA International, Professor Gary Locke. Good evening, colleagues and friends. On behalf of the officers of CIA International, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you again, to repeat the welcome to the 43rd CAA conference. Now, I've not checked this myself, but I think this must be one of the longest running, if not the longest running, archaeological conferences. If it's your first time at CAA, then a special welcome to you. If you've been here before, then welcome back, and it's nice to see you back. Um, i would like very much to start by thanking the University of Siena for hosting us in this wonderful building in this wonderful town. And I would also like to thank Stefano and Roberto, but especially Stefano, I think, and their team of helpers um, for putting together this conference. Those of us, those of us who see the behind the scenes work that is involved in organising one conferences um, appreciate and realise what a huge amount of work it is and we're eternally grateful to Stefano and his team. I've just realised that perhaps I shouldn't say that because it might put people off volunteering to do it in the future but anyway I've said it now. Um, I don't want to go into the early history of CAA um, but in those days, 43 years ago, and I must say I wasn't there 43 years ago, even I'm not that old. Um, 43 years ago, the original intent of it was very much one of interdisciplinarity. It was to bring together, primarily in those days, computer scientists and statisticians, to work with archaeologists, to come up with new and interesting approaches to understanding the past, um, thinking about the past and analysing data that's relevant to the past. I would argue that those original intentions of CAA are still primarily what we're interested in today. Of course, there are many new sub-disciplines to archaeology, there are many new technologies, and compared to the 1970s, we do things in a very different way. We're not just now interested in databases and statistics as we tended to be then. Um, but having said there are similarities, there are also big, big differences. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was in London at a concert of a group I, I was very keen on in the 1960s, and I still am. Um, they're called The Who. Some of you may be familiar with The Who. Um, it was their 50th anniversary concert, and Roger Daltrey, who's the singer of The Who, walked onto the stage 
And the first thing he said was, who'd have thought it 50 years? And I must say, I feel a little bit like that now. 43 years, I think, is a tremendous achievement. But things have, have changed a lot. Um, we've gone from 20 people in a basement room at the University of Birmingham in the UK to what we see today. Um, seven parallel sessions for the second year running. CAA had over 600 abstracts submitted for papers. There are approximately 500 people here, 320 papers, 160 posters. I mean, this is a tremendous um, growth, even though it is over 43 years. The organisation of CAA has also changed considerably from those early days, which is not surprising. And I'd just like to highlight one, of the, one or two points that I think are relevant. First of all, we attempt to be a very democratic organisation. Um, and I would draw your attention to the annual general meeting, which takes place at 6 o'clock on Wednesday. In here, I think, in here. Um, I would urge you to attend the AGM, because this is your conference, and at the AGM, you can have a say into particular things. And this year, we shall be discussing the future of the publication of CAA. And I can hear some of you saying, again, but yes, again. <coughs> we shall be seeking your views on the future shape and size of CAA, whether we want it to continue as it is. And also, of course, you can vote for future venues of CAA. Um, we know where next year's is going to be, but beyond that, we need to make decisions. Another important change is that we now have national chapters, and we've got more than 10 national chapters. Um, some of them will be meeting during, during the next three days, and there are representatives of national chapters here. So if you're not a member of a national chapter, seek out the appropriate people from your country and, and make contact and join your national chapter. The other thing is that we very much try to encourage young scholars and scholars on low income. And to do this, we give bursaries. And I'm very proud to say that this year, as in past years, we are giving 12,000 euros approximately in bursaries. So if you are having a bursary, if you've applied for one and you've got it, then just to point out that tomorrow lunchtime is the time that you will be getting your bursary. And Axel, I think, has circulated details of where you can get that. The other important thing is that we have a special bursary called the Nick Ryan Bursary. And this is, this is a, a, a thousand euros towards next year's conference and it's, it's named after our long-standing ex-chairman, Nick Ryan. And there are details available of how you can apply for the Nick Ryan bursary. You need to be a student who's giving a paper. So I'll finish there. Um, all, I, all I need to say really is enjoy the conference, enjoy the intellectual content of the conference, but also enjoy the social aspects of the conference. I know Stefano has got several things lined up for us. Um, and I would like you to take the CAA pledge, which is that you will speak to five people each day that you've never spoken to before. Because we are a very friendly community, and I would like to encourage you to meet new people, <coughs> make new contacts, and make new friends. Okay, thank you very much. Gary, and now I give the podium to uh, Roberto Scopino, uh, who is a, a, a researcher at the CNR at PISA. So I will try to be very brief, and I want to welcome you also on behalf of uh, 
the president of CNR, of the uh, Consiglio Nazionale delle Ricerche. Uh, Professor Nicolais was uh, planning to be here with you to open the conference. Unfortunately, as you know, when you are the president of a big uh, research infrastructure, your agenda is not very easy to manage, and at the end, he had to, uh, to cancel his participation. But he was really willing to be here because there is a lot of similarities between uh, CAA and the um, direction he wants to give to CNR, to uh, my institution. Uh, as you probably know, uh, CNR is uh, organizing departments. We have a humanities department, which is central to archaeology, and we have a technology department, an ICT department. And one important policy at CNR is to try to join these two components. So I'm trying to avoid as much as possible to leave them as separate bodies and trying to, to start up as much as possible multi-disciplinary activities in a, such a way bringing to, to a structure which is very similar to CAA. So this was the interest of the president uh, for being here and unfortunately we cannot be uh, with him here. Um, I helped a little bit uh, Stefano uh, only on the scientific part of the organization of the conference so most of the burden of the real organization is, was on his shoulders. Uh, by looking just to the scientific point, uh, I uh, touched with my hands the level of uh, consolidation of the CAA and of the domain of archaeology and technology. You can imagine that uh, receiving 600 papers abstract is terrific. It's a terrific event. If you have to, to manage them, it's a lot of work, but in any case, it's very nice because it gives you the impression of how many people is producing results, is working on this domain, and I think it's very, it's an important sign of healthiness of this uh, discipline. Um, uh, the, the program is very uh, dense, as you will see, and it uh, couldn't have been uh, differently, given the, the large number of people attending and the large number of papers, and I hope you will appreciate even if we will have many parallel sessions. Um, please remember that uh, we are in charge of organizing the conference, but we are also in charge of giving knowledge on the conference to the future organizers. So uh, we will try to give to the people who will replace us in the future instruction on what worked and what was not successful. So we are looking for comments, for maybe also from complaints from you, in order to understand what we did in the correct manner and what was organizing the wrong man in order to avoid to have the similar errors in the future. So thanks a lot and enjoy the conference. So thank you very much, Roberto. And uh, now is my time to say a few words. Uh, let's say that it goes without saying that the organization of an event like this is a complex and demanding task that only achieves success through real teamwork. Uh, so, uh, I will start by offering heartfelt thanks to all who have helped to make this meeting possible. First of all, the steering committee of CAA International and especially its chairman, Professor Gary Locke, and his treasurer, uh, Axel Poschlewski, and of course, all the others uh, uh, for their uh, unfolding support. Uh, they were always uh, there when we needed them and uh, they helped immensely in creating a happy working uh, atmosphere. Uh, a special thank is addressed also to the OCS guru, uh, Embo Peji, uh, uh, who patiently supported us using the new CAA conference management system. Uh, our thanks also go to the CNR, our partner in the organization of the Congress, and of course to my co-chairman, Roberto Scopigno. Uh, last but not least, uh, uh, we owe a debt of gratitude to all who have given their uh, time and enthusiasm to the organization of the meeting. Uh, the scientific secretariat under the leadership, the strong leadership, let's say, of Dr. Mariana Cirillo, uh, to the conference office, Giuliana Pasquini, Roberta Corsi, Elisa Pratari, Farida Tuzzuto, Serena Matti, and uh, to our many students, volunteers, to the many bodies that give us uh, uh, their support, and to the sponsors uh, whose generosity has sustained us in this enterprise. Now, 
the number of people who have signed on for CAA 2015 has really taken us by surprise, uh, up to about 50, uh, uh, sorry, 500 delegates have registered for the conference from far more places than we ever anticipated. Uh, that number in itself has prompted a vote or two. Uh, above all, it says to me that CAA is very much alive and kicking, and that is in the robust and good health, uh, and that remains, um, uh, I would say, a fully relevant force in the scientific community, fully engaged with the question of the day and continuing focal point for the profession. Uh, all of that speaks well for the CAA 2015, keep the revolution going. Also, the significance of that month is obvious. Uh, uh, I think that it's worth uh, a moment or two of reflection. Uh, to <laughs> deny that in the past 30 years, digital technologies have profoundly revolutionized archaeology in the office and in the lab, in the field and in the classroom. The progressive introduction of digital technologies in the archaeological process has, of course, led to a general increase in efficiency. But perhaps more important, it has provided a spur to the discussion of methodology and through that has strongly influenced not only the way we go about things, but also the outcomes that we have been able to achieve. The pioneering phase in the application of digital techniques in archaeology, in archaeological research, uh, has clearly borne fruit, and today we have applications such as GIS, database, remote sensing, and spatial analysis, as well virtual and cyber archaeology, are deeply embedded within our universities. This is all good, of course, but we must not assume that the has been completed. Uh, an intrinsic revolutionary uh, uh, instinct towards technological development has been but it will be uh, survived only by virtue of the results and it brings about, uh, that it brings about. Uh, or to use the words of our chairman Gary Locke in his very well-known book, uh, 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 computers not only change the way we do things, but more importantly they change the way we think about what we do and why we do it. So, keep the revolution going is a motto that lays stress on the need to maintain innovation in archaeology through technological advances, but innovation must have, must have at its root the fostering of critical thought and the framing of new archaeological questions. So, there is much work still to be done and fresh challenges to be faced, to be faced in the month and years ahead. One final thought, uh, the date of this conference and most of all this opening ceremony has not uh, come about by chance. Uh, the 3rd of March for the University of Siena and in particular for the human science and archaeology represent a sad but enduring anniversary. Eight years ago, on this day, we lost a key figure in Italian archaeology at least in the last 50 years. A man who had an extraordinary influence on many aspects of medieval and landscape studies. Uh, not least, we call to mind his role in the promotion and development of digital techniques in archaeology. Our thought and memories go therefore to our friend and mentor, Professor Ricardo Frankovich. He always inspired us to seek new horizons, Without them, I doubt that this conference would have found its way in Siena. So, I can now, let's say, declare the 43rd conference, uh, CAA conference, officially open. Uh, I remind <coughs> you, all of you that after the keynote talk of Professor Martin Miller, that I'm going to introduce uh, almost immediately, uh, I have the, the additional pleasure to invite uh, 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 to what I'm sure, to what I hope, let's say, uh, will be a splendid ice-breaking party this evening in the cloister of San Francisco. And, of course, I extend my thanks to all of you for coming. 
enjoy the conference and take home with your memories the extraordinary atmosphere of Siena. Thank you very much.